early. It's like still quite dark. Um, but we've just come to do the horses and um, get their feeds ready and stuff and feed them and then get on the road to Somerset. No, not Somerset, Devon. <laughs> Oh, so that was like a super early start for me. I am not a fan of early mornings and um, my husband was meant to wake me up because normally he's up at like half five. Um, but obviously the day that I need to get up at just before six, he hasn't woken up and didn't wake me up. So Sophie woke me up by ringing on my phone when she arrived at my house. So that was good. Anyway, we had a mega rush to get the horses done and um, they were all very good, so that was fine. And now we are about halfway there. So, um, but luckily I think I overestimated the amount of time it was gonna take to get there slightly. So we're making good time and hopefully we'll be there um, a bit earlier than planned. Um, I forgot to say, actually, we're going to Tyler Bradshaw's for some dressage lessons. So that <laughs> is the purpose of this early morning start. Um, Tyler is a, a dressage rider. She rides to a really high level and has got lovely schoolmaster horses. And I would like to do some changes and maybe some piaf and massage. Um, and Sophie is hoping to have a nice lesson on something that will be getting her confidence up with her cantering. Uh, so yeah, that's where we're off to. So I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be fun.
Ini Pak. So um, we're just having a little cool down now. Yeah, it was amazing. He was um, such a nice horse to ride, very forgiving. I did make a few mistakes in my um, changes with the timing, but you were very good, weren't you? So yeah, very nice horse to ride, good boy. So Sophie's now on her horse that she's riding. I think he's called Sancho.
Tony. Tony. stop off at Greendale's and um, it's a bit of a detour but it's so nice in here. Really love all these seeds and a really um, lovely packaging. So yeah, they've got lots of nice Christmas things in now as well. Lots of lovely candles and things. So yes, filled up on lovely vinegar as well. They've got lovely balsamic vinegars with different flavourings of fruits and dates and bacon and yeah, so it's really definitely worth a trip here if you ever are passing Greendale Farm Shop. So we just did a little bit of a handbrake turn on the corner because we drove past until there's a little um, <laughs> country cafe and take away with a riding shop. Uh, so yeah, we've got some treats uh, for the dog who's very patiently been in the car all morning. And um, yeah, coffee apple treats, very seasonal with Halloween. So yeah, hopefully they'll like them. <laughs> so it's really windy and horrible. But we have just decided to have a quick pit stop haha, at Pittards, which is, I think, a leather manufacturer. I know you can get Pittards leather for car seats and stuff, and it's meant to be really luxury. So obviously, because of the boot business and being involved in leather goods, I thought it'd be interesting for us to go and have a quick look around. So we are going to go in. So we're just having a little look around, and there's some really beautiful bags and things. I mean, oh, that's really nice. Do you like that one? Yeah, that's really cool, isn't it? Um, yeah, so the gentleman's been really helpful and just been telling me a bit about the products here. Um, so the bags and things are all made from UK-based cow hides. Um, so, you know, it's quite unusual now. There's, it's a bit of a dying industry over here with leather making and tanning. Um, they do all the tanning here. He said they do everything here apart from taking the hair off the hides. So, um, yeah, it's all very in-house. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna just show you some of the products here, have a little walk around. And um, they've also got a tannery in Ethiopia and um, they import sort of some of the skins from other countries as well. So they've got a really big range of things. So they've got an absolutely amazing range of glove colors. Um, absolutely love these teal colors up here because obviously that's my favorite. Um, so yeah, we were just gonna have a look into this room down here where they've got some of the hides which look very very interesting uh, so as someone who's been into my crafts my whole life before i got into doing the wide boot company um this is like a little treasure trove in here um they have just got the most amazing amount of offcuts and um colors and i mean 
you know, this is just amazing. Like if you're into crafty stuff, this is the place to come to get some leather offcuts to make things out of. I've got a few friends I know that make needle felted horses and make tack for them and things that would absolutely love this. So, um, yeah, and I think it's fantastic that it's made in the UK as well, most of it. So, um, you yeah, know, it's always really good to try and support UK businesses. So um, we just found these bags of offcuts. So again, if you're someone that's into crafts, they've got these beautiful mixed bags of different colours and shapes. Um, and they are 7.50 or £10. Uh, you know, and look, look at all the different styles of leather and... Oh, it's, like, it's really cool in here, actually. I could spend hours, hours. But I have horses to go home and feed. But um, yeah, it's a really, really amazing place. So I found a little bundle here, which has got quite a few of my company colours in it. So I'm going to maybe have a go at making myself some spur guards to just go inside my spurs. Um, and also, they have got all of these leather tools. So if you're looking into getting into doing your own leather work, it looks like they've got everything that you might need in terms of like things to skive the leather and um, punch holes in it and lots of like really good high quality fixings as well. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a really fab place. Definitely recommend checking it out if you're anywhere in Devon or Somerset. Are we in Somerset now? I think we're Somerset now. <laughs> this is so soft. I mean, it is literally, it just feels like streaking, streaking a foal's muzzle. That is what that feels like. It is so soft. I mean, I can't imagine if you were, lucky enough to be able to afford to have a car with this leather inside it is it is amazing so sadly we can't be too much longer here because i reckon i could spend probably about three or four hours here quite happily um but we've got to get back to do the horses before it gets dark um but yeah this is just some more of the finished products that they make so it's such beautiful high quality i really like these bags with the pockets on the front i think they're a really lovely design and we've got leather jackets gloves I mean like literally you could get any colour of gloves to go with any outfit I reckon <laughs> and then oh these are nice these little jewellery boxes as well oh, yeah Uh, so I'm going to try and finish my vlog today, um, but before I do that I'm going to cut my hair. I actually hadn't realised how ridiculously long it had got, um, and where it's all wet and horrible outside it's just taking forever to dry, so I'm just going to chop it myself. Doing the old unicorn, I don't know if you've seen that, you put all your hair on top of your head with some bands and then you chop it and it basically ends up with some layers, so yeah I'm just going to get rid of all of this because it's annoying me. <laughs> so yeah that's a good look isn't it? Um, Hmm. I used to have like blue bits in the end of my hair, which is why it's so damaged at the end because it's peroxided. So um, yeah, that's what I need to get rid of. I can't get a brush through it when it gets wet. Um, so yeah, here we go. Right. I know anyone who's a proper hairdresser is probably going to be horrified at the scissors I'm using, but hey ho. Um, yeah, I mean obviously I could go to a proper hairdresser, but I'd rather spend that money on a bale of hay or something. Uh, here we go. Hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, could make a nice light makeup brush or something out of that. Mm, beautiful. Okay, so let's see what's happened. This might be very short now. Oh no. That's not too bad. It needs a good wash. Um, but yeah, that's definitely sorted out a little bit of the ridiculous volume that was there. This like gets really sweaty and horrible when you're riding as well when it's so thick. Okay, so oh, I still seem to have a couple of little bits of bleached. But anyway, that'll do. 
you know, at some point I may do something with my fringe, but in the winter, don't you find like when you're trying to poo pick and stuff, it's really annoying having a fringe. So I'm gonna just keep it long. I know it's not the most flattering hairstyle, but it keeps it back when I'm trying to do stuff outside when it's windy and horrible without it getting in my face. <sighs> yeah, anyway, there you go, haircut done. So I've done my haircut and I'm feeling a bit less heavy now from that. Um, so yeah, just going back to our trip on Wednesday, we had a really fantastic time going to see Tyler for a lesson. So um, the things we wanted to get out of it, Sophie was hoping to ride something that she could be a bit more confident on with her cantering. She rides Atia, my ex race horse at the moment, and um, Atia is a little bit arthritic and she's very on the forehand. She's very, always been very downhill. So for learning to canter on um, and with the fact I don't have a school at home, it's um, difficult to get going with that for Sophie. So she wanted to have a ride on something that was gonna be a bit more forward and um, in a school environment. And for me, I was looking to practice my changes because I'm getting to the point with Elf now, his counter work's getting really good and it's more balanced and he's stronger. So I think we're ready to start looking at maybe putting some changes in soon. So I wanted to practice on something that was knew how to do them well so that I could learn how to ride them more effectively. So um, yeah, we had such a nice time on the horses. Um, the horse I rode boss, he is a Lusitano cross warm blood. Uh, he's got a broken ear because he's had a bit of a, a checkered past in Spain before he came over to the UK. Um, but he's, Tyler's reschooled him beautifully and I felt very safe and happy on him. He really looked after me and um, was very forgiving of any mistakes that I made because, you know, sometimes when you're learning changes, it's quite difficult to get the timing right. But he, you know, taught me well. Um, if I did it right, he did it right. If I did it wrong, he might do it, change a couple of strides later, but he did it. But, you know, it helped me learn the timing and get it right. So he was a great schoolmaster. Um, and uh, just to go back to Tyler, uh, she's a really good instructor. I really liked her approach, um, the way she teaches. She's come from a very, very normal background and worked her way up in dressage. So she's quite um, direct with the way she teaches, but I, I like that. Um, I don't want somebody who's just gonna go, oh, well done, well done, that's great, that's great. Um, you know, I want somebody that goes, no, that was a bit rubbish, do it again do it like this and you know teach you how to ride properly because otherwise what's the point you know you're not going to learn from somebody just telling you you're doing things well when you're not really so um yeah and then when I did something right and she praised me I was like yes you know now I feel really good because I actually know that's genuine praise um so yeah r really really enjoyed it if you get the chance to go and have a lesson with Tyler I'd highly recommend it um there's a very good podcast on Spotify that's by Teal Anthony, I think her name is. Um, she interviewed Tyler and it's a very interesting uh, podcast about how she went from, you know, a very, very basic, quite broken home in her early childhood and has gone up through the ranks and is now competing, you know, up there with the best of them. So it's very inspiring. If you're somebody like me who slogs around in a wet field with your horse and doesn't have a lot of facilities, you know, um, I definitely recommend having a listen to that. Um, and then just to move on to the trip to Pittards. So because I run the Wide Beat Company, I deal with a lot of leather products. So it was just a, on the way through, really. And um, I said to Sophie, oh, you know, do you fancy popping in on the way back if we've got time? So, um, yeah, and we were really glad we did. It was a really um, lovely sort of outlet shop. So they've got some lovely products in there that you would have seen on the video. And if you're somebody like me who likes crafty things, then definitely check it out. So much in there. Um, and I'm really glad I asked if I could have permission to just do the, some vlog posts and videos in there. And um, the manager came down just to see what I was asking to do. And um, he was so helpful and friendly and to told us all about the company. And um, they've got like 30 people working there and just about the processes and all the products they do, where they come from. So I'm really glad we stopped and uh, made the effort to have a conversation with them. Um, I'm definitely gonna get in contact with them as well because it's always good to have contacts in the UK. I'd love to be able to make some products in the UK rather than importing from abroad. So um, yeah, watch this space, let's see what happens. But anyway, I really hope you enjoyed the blog and um, that, yeah, you enjoyed having coming along on our little trip 
to uh, Tyler's and seeing how we got on.